in the grim darkness of the 41st millennium, there is only war and very expensive games pieces. Hi, I'm Andrew Horn. Welcome to Planet Hex. On this episode, I'm going to talk about why I quit playing Warhammer. So I originally came into the Warhammer hobby in about 1989, 1990 and loved it. My early games experiences with it were things like 40k of course as well as um, Space Hulk and the epic scale Space Marine. Those are the first ones that introduced me to the hobby. But I um, was obsessed with it for a long time. I got the White Dwarf copies, I got the the minis, I got the games, even things like Talisman I got into, and this blew my mind. I loved the artwork, I loved the whole aesthetic of it, I loved the idea that we were, you could lay out these far future battles on a tabletop or in a store somewhere, and I just loved the whole thing, the painting, the building, the playing, it was great. It was a fantastic hobby. Eventually I came out of that and discovered guitars and girls and, you know, needing things like food, and fell away from the hobby for many years. A few years ago I did find it again as an adult but I thought it would be something interesting to introduce my kids to that didn't involve playing on a screen all the time. Nothing against video games but they, um, I figured it was it would be good to try and broaden their horizons a bit so I introduced them to the worlds of Warhammer and I got hooked on it myself in a big way again and it was so fun it was so fun i became absolutely obsessed again with the games the minis uh, rediscovering all the lore and the updated rules for things like 40k and re uh, discovering what had changed with the fantasy setting with the uh, age of sigma and just falling in love with it all over again and um, the black library as well the black library books are phenomenal they are excellent I got so into it that at one point I was even interviewed at Games Workshop HQ for a job writing for Games Workshop for the Warhammer community and for some of the codices. I remember it was a really fun interview, there were lovely, lovely people that I talked to, it was a really fun application um, thing that I did, but I, I did do about 25, 30 of these applications before I got to an interview, but when I did get to an interview there, I, um, I had to come up with some stuff for the uh, then unpublished Adeptus Sororitas Codex, which was fun. It was never used, of course, it was just like, a, here's, a, here's a test, write this, and come up with a, um, one of the application questions was come up with a product description. And um, I think I, I got the interview because I had included a joke about a cat's arse, but, um, you know, that's how you get jobs at uh, games companies, make jokes about cat's asses, I think. Anyway, I loved it. I would go to Warhammer World on a regular basis. As you'll see throughout this pic this uh, video, there are images littered from my various visits to Warhammer World, which is just a beautiful place. It's a wonderful place. Um, if you've not been there, do try it. It's here in Nottingham. And there are there's a great big store. There's a Black Library store at the back of it. There's a huge exhibition. There's the Games Hall, and there is the marvellous Bugman's restaurant. I love Bugman's. Oh, what a great place. I'm desperate to get back there and have another Stormcast sandwich. I love it. It's great. It's such a fun place to be. And I really did enjoy playing the games. I hung out a lot at the Warhammer store in Nottingham City Centre, just off Market Square. And I would take my eldest son to play on a Sunday there at Crusader Club, where he made a lot of friends. The staff were brilliant with him, and we spent a heck of a lot of money. So what made me quit playing Warhammer? My collection had got to a point where it was just spilling out all over the place. The books, the minis, the scenery, the various cases where I got paints and everything like that. It was getting a bit too much to handle. Also the cost. It has to be addressed. The cost of Warhammer uh, models and games box sets is it's crazy. It's way above any other range of gaming equipment or games pieces or any games paraphernalia and I say that as a Magic the Gathering player. This stuff is expensive and I know it is put across as a luxury brand and as luxury items but that is something that 
immediately puts off new players is the sheer astronomical price of some of the stuff is very hard to get into and of course the pandemic came around and it made it impossible to really hang out and play in Warhammer World or any game stores or people's houses anything like that it made it really not a possible thing to do so while a lot of games like d and I play d and online with my D&D group and that, that works well online you know, there's a lot of tabletop apps and sites that allow you to do have a, something akin to a tabletop experience online, and that that worked out pretty well. And of course, in Magic: The Gathering, there's Arena, so you can play that online all the time as, as much as you want. But with Warhammer, you really need to be there in a, in the physical space. You need to lay out those armies. You need to lay out your rule books. You need the interaction with the other players. That's integral to the entire hobby. So that got taken away with the pandemic, which was a pest. And um, while I, I found myself getting, you know, going through the novels and things like that, I did eventually, as the pandemic stretched on into infinity, find myself moving away from the hobby. So it was the, ac the accessibility was a big factor. You know, having to take around a huge bag or several boxes of stuff in order to play this game. Whereas with D&D, I'd be there with one backpack, just with, you know, a rule book, a notebook, and some dice. Uh, and my dice tray, of course. Um, so the accessibility of Warhammer did put me off eventually. I needed something that was smaller in scale. Um, so MTG definitely fit that bill. Although now I say that I've got about 20 bazillion MTG cards everywhere, so that's, you know, but there still doesn't take up as much room as Warhammer. And the rule books aren't 35, 30, 30 pounds plus each. You know, I'm used to games, games should come with the rule book included as part of it. And while the hardbacks are brilliant, approaching a rule book which is 300 plus pages is really daunting to a new player. It's quite daunting to an experienced player. You know, this is, oh, every, every time there's a new edition, you have to wade through all this stuff in order to find out what you're doing. So there is the size and the scale of it. That's the, the other part of it. There's just so much stuff involved in it. And that goes hand in hand with the price. Because there's so much stuff, there is, an, there is a constant stream of new products. And of course that is off-putting as well because those new products keep going up and up and up in price as we've seen recently with the uh, the new uh, Warhammer Underworlds box set which has come out which is way more expensive than the previous sets um, and the battle boxes and so on it just the cost of it is astronomical and it takes up a ton of space and it takes so long to set these things up and you have to go somewhere with quite a lot of open space that isn't going to be knocked over by cats and things like that to play it as well and it just got to the point where I said no, I need to draw a line under this so I did move on from playing Warhammer now it does have a bit of a, a troubled community aspect to it in some ways as we've seen recently with what happened in Spain but there's there's still a very positive community aspect to it and that is something that I do miss about playing, playing Warhammer. I think where it really has excelled in recent years has been with smaller games like Kill Team. Kill Team is a great example of how you can still enjoy some Warhammer themed fun and some Warhammer games without needing several thousand points of armies out there, scenery and all kinds of stuff. Kill Team is a great idea. Of course, that got very, very expensive as well. And for a you know a miniature skirmish game that's just on such a small scale, it didn't really need all the bells and whistles that ended up coming along with Kill Team as either. It just needed to be small scale. What would bring me back to Warhammer? I am tempted sometimes. I am tempted. I still read the novels. I think the novels are fantastic. There's some extremely talented people putting those out. Black Library is doing a great job with the with the Warhammer themed fiction, but. For the games, it would need lower price points. It doesn't need, to, I don't believe that things always need a giant box set. I like the idea of smaller boxes that could build up into something larger. 
So what, what comes to mind is something of the size of First Strike, which is the, one of the previous versions of the Warhammer starter set, the 40k starter set, or Storm Strike, the uh, Age of Sigmar version. Those were a really accessible price point. Uh, when I got First Strike, it was at 25 quid. I think the, the equivalent now is about 30 pounds. That's still, that's pushing it a bit, but that is still relatively acceptable. You don't get a ton of models with them or anything like that, however, you do get a taste of it. Now, why not bring out some smaller boxes like those with a few minis, a few rules, and a few bits of scenery that tell part of a story, tell part of a narrative game, rather than sell, selling the entire thing in one massive box set, which, is, which puts off people with jobs, it puts off parents, you know, it, it does end up pushing new players away, prospective new players away, and it pushes old players away as well, having these crazy prices. Some smaller boxes, some smaller prices than the minis, I know they're charging on based on points, and based on value of the models, rather than value of the actual materials that make them, but that's kind of, again, it puts people off. And in today's marketplace, where people are moving ever more away from physical games, you need to kind of bring people back a bit. So lower the prices, put out some smaller scale stuff to entice people in and try not to make it quite so daunting to learn it. There is so much lore. There is so much lore. The, the rules are, they are very dense. Even in their more simplified um, incarnation of the last few years, I mean, there are damn sights more simple now than they were when I started in the, in the late 80s, early 90s, but still it's easy to be, um, it's easy to understand when you look at a, a stat sheet for, for Warhammer 40k and you just think, what the hell am I looking at? What is this? So yeah, price point, the size and scale and the accessibility, those all kind of came together to um, move me towards stopping playing Warhammer and that is why I quit playing Warhammer. I'm still, with it, still into it, still uh, read the books, I still keep up with the what's going on in the community, but I just, I can't bring myself to pay such an obscene amount for stuff that is, um, that may not get a lot of use. And yeah, we need to see some return for what we pay. We need to see some return for, for the expenditure in these things. But that's why I play, stop playing Warhammer. May I, could I be um, enticed back? I don't see them lowering the prices anytime soon or making it more accessible to new or returning players. I'd love it if they did though, so please, Games Workshop, please do prove me wrong. Entice me back as a player. Let's see what you can do. I'm Andrew Horn. Thanks for watching this episode of Planet Hex. Thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe.